Before I dive in on a bit of a rant on this, because this is one of my favorite topics, um, I'm going to just lay down a principle. Comparisons are the thief of joy. So if you are comparing yourself to someone who is not you, and you don't have a knowledge of yourself to understand where your limits lie, like what Parsa said, you know, know your limits, know yourself, and you base all of what it is that you are removing the confines of limits upon on you and what you can achieve. So flowing with what Parsa said, I definitely agree. Push your limits incrementally and consistently, and that is the way to break a lot of self-imposed limits. That's a way to break a lot of um, limiting beliefs and those sorts of things. Just incrementally push the edges of your boundaries. Now I'm going to go into some deeper stuff. So now, blur all the rules. There's, there's you know, gray areas to every rule. Live in the loopholes of reality. So now reality, you can blur the lines on reality too. It's all impacted by perception, perspective, discernment, and ultimately when it comes to being limitless, your willingness to break the boundaries. I'm gonna use your example for this. Although your body type might not reflect that of, let's say Arnold Schwarzenegger, you can still meet your intrinsic limits or qualifications for what could be considered muscular. Now that comes with a dose of acceptance that comes with a dose of being enough of knowing when enough is enough and granted that's a double-edged sword because for someone who seeks wealth and who goes after wealth wholeheartedly that might put a limit within that area of your being but there are ways to defy the odds and it depends on where you're able to blur the lines and this would likely be on your values so yes you can do much with the body there is plastic surgery there are tons of therapies. There's Brian Johnson. Um, so, you know, if you want to get that really muscular look and that's something that's important to you, seek every modality to make that happen. But once again, it's a compromising of values to make that happen. So where are the lines willing to be drawn and where is the acceptance with that? Because I know you've brought this up about um, your body type several times. So, you know, there, there's a level of acceptance that is not happening that could potentially happen. And once again, you can build muscle at any age. And that's why I brought up the Jack Lane. And yes, I'm being asked. Um, but there are a variety of things that are out there. There's, you know, you could up your testosterone. There's a lot of modalities. Finding the one that works for you is where the resilience comes in to breaking the limits and boundaries. But once again, it comes down to fully accepting your body type and accepting your limits or compromising on your health and wellness to what is it? Get the silicone injections of like the people who get the fake muscles. Yeah. So, I mean, it's possible, but what is the willingness underneath that? But our possibilities are really highly unlimited. Look at the pyramids, for example. We can't reduplicate that in this age very easily, or even perhaps in the time frame that the ancient Egypt Egyptians did. I, I'm always fascinated by ancient cultures having like crazy pools of mercury. Like how? How is this possible? How is it possible that in the Iliad, uh, automatons are mentioned? You know, like, and the automatons are Hephaestus's assistants, metal mates. You know, it, we can do so much more than we believe that we're capable of. You can look at the gurus, how gurus have different capabilities mentioned within, you know, cities and all that stuff. And if you're not familiar with cities, those are uh, metaphysical ma manifestations, like being able to teleport, fun things like that, or, you know, different crazy things, pyro, all that stuff. But one of the examples of being limitless is Wim Hof. He's case in point of someone who has exceedingly pushed his limits and through that inspired others to follow suit. And... I mean, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to defying the odds, defying the going extremely into the possibilities and fully embracing the idea of possibility that it can exist. But also on that, understanding that it possibly might not look the way that you are wanting it to look. So for example, you know, I'm leaving a chit here. You're going to hear this whenever you hear it. Maybe you'll hear it a year from now. And that's essentially my voice time traveling. It, it, that's, that's it. Like time travel has happened. Congratulations. So, but it's not as we would like it to look, but it still is in concept that happening. And to wrap this up, it's all magic until science comes in and figures it out. But I am going to do one more thing, actually. So one of the fun things that I've been doing is learning to leverage time and in more of a metaphysical way, because I love playing with time and once again, pushing my limits. So when I feel like time is escaping me, I go into my consciousness and basically kind of expand time. And I notice that time tends to slow down after I do that, or my perception of time slows down after I do that. So there's things like these that we can achieve relatively easily when we 
reprogram our limiting beliefs into positive beliefs. And there's so many ways of making that happen. Sometimes it's just, you know, experimenting. Other times it's affirmations. It can be a lot of different things to bypass limiting beliefs. A lot of times it comes down to practice, to be honest, especially if it's an old ingrained one from your childhood. So let me know if you have any questions. So think of it in this way. It's like jailbreaking your brain as you would an iPhone. Now an iPhone comes with, you know, its set of parameters or whatnot. It comes with its defaults. But once you jailbreak it, you are able to do exponentially more and bypass the limits of the programming on the iPhone, much like breaking these limiting beliefs.